What's going on everyone? As we can all see by looking at today's heat map, it was a bloodbath as about 88% of stocks in the S&P 500 finished in the red and today was a very crazy day for multiple reasons. Not only did we see this decent sell off, not only do we have crucial earnings to cover from AMD, Amazon and SMCI, not only do we have Jerome Powell speaking tomorrow and a crucial interest rate decision, but we also had marijuana stocks absolutely ripped to the upside like nothing we haven't seen in quite a long time. Some of the call options on some of these marijuana stocks literally increased by 21,000% today. So we have a whole lot to cover for today and we are set for a very exciting day tomorrow. So if you're going to watch one of our videos to the end this week, this is the one. So let's get right into it, Tom. Yeah, the market was pretty crazy today. We go look at the SPY. It was down quite a bit. A lot of these tech stocks were down. I mean, the heat map was one of the bloodiest heat maps I've seen in a while. It's like a shark attack today or something. But uh, whenever I go look at the market, uh, there was a lot of stuff that was down. But there's one part of the market that is getting high, so to say. And that is the MJ stocks. I know you hinted on it in the uh, in the intro there. But CGC is up 78% today, guys. Like, we are seeing some insane moves. Tilray up into the 39% mark, was over 40% at one point. ACB, Aora Cannabis, 40 plus percent as well. And there's a handful of others that are up. But what's the big reason? Why are they moving today? And Mike, we've talked about this for a while. The DEA has been talking about rescheduling marijuana. There's been a big push towards the DEA to get this done and it looks like they're actually having it finally happen here so this is good it's not necessarily done yet there's still a couple things that have to happen but once the OMB signs off on this the DEA will take public comment and then they will start to do the uh the changing of the classification okay so right now marijuana is a schedule one drug that is a pretty bad thing to say it's up there with heroin peyotes uh all types of stuff right schedule two you have meth cocaine fentanyl but it's gonna be moved down to schedule three with like testosterone and anabolic steroids so honestly this is really good mike and it's going to even allow uh researchers and scientists to start to research it because there's a lot of restrictions on those schedule one drugs on how you can research them so uh we're going to see a lot of cool things come from this and i know that there's some banking bills that are set to go through with marijuana as well eventually as they start to get those done so there's just it's a, it's really positive to see all the i guess uh regulations of, of with marijuana starting to finally come to an end here long story short this news is really good for the marijuana industry uh this industry has struggled quite a bit over the past couple of years solely due to how harsh the regulations are for companies in this industry and uh, as we could tell by looking at some long-term charts of tickers like cgc and tlry uh they had a lot of hype back in like 2018 and 2019 but since that point they have just slowly eroded year after year uh, uh, given that this year is a pretty big election year, there's definitely a lot of pressure to uh, make pros uh, make a lot of progress in uh, this uh, sort of topic, you can say. And, uh, you know, marijuana stocks have a lot to gain from that. And I think that's part of the reason why we saw such a rush into stocks like CGC, TLRY, and just all other stocks in this industry right now. So continue to keep a close eye on them going forward. Marijuana stocks are some of the craziest stocks in the market. They have giant swings to the upside and the downside. So if you can't handle the heat, then get out of the kitchen with these ones. <laughs> they are crazy and you have to be prepared with that um, if you plan to trade them. So keep that in mind, but they are, they are moving with a whole lot of momentum right now. They really are. And Mike, we need to put that on a shirt or something. That's like your uh, your catch line for the MJ stocks. You know, every time we talk, I was waiting for it, actually. But uh, <laughs> but it's up 78%. I mean, yeah, it's definitely a true statement. If you can't handle the heat, get out of the kitchen. And the good news is that whenever we see CGC, uh, whenever it does start to go on these big runs, a lot of times it can continue to, to move for quite a few days here. Uh, this setup that's been happening with CGC has been ongoing already for quite a while since like around like the 15th of March was like, I guess the first green candle there that really kicked it off. But uh, we're actually pretty high off of lows right now. Those lows were around $3 stocks all the way up around 15 right now. So everybody's asking themselves, Mike, like, oh my gosh, 
gosh, should I play this tomorrow? Is it going to go up? And the big thing with these stocks is going to be to feel out that momentum. When the market opens, if you see it gapping down and there's a lot of red coming in, you might need to wait for that volume to come back in or for some momentum to pick back up, right? These could get volatile, especially after a 78% day. Just don't be surprised if there's a lot of volatility. In my opinion, there's two ways to play marijuana stocks. The first way is to scalp the uh, short-term movement. So if you see the stock moving in like a very strong and powerful way, whether it be to the upside or the downside, there's a lot of opportunity to you know surf that wave, so to say, uh, just like we saw intraday today. On the other hand, if you don't want to deal with the very uh, short-term moves, you can just make a decision on whether or not you will decide to hold you know these stocks for the coming months um, or even until the end of the year, again, considering it is an election year. So uh, keep that in mind. The one thing I would say to be careful about is trying to like time them on a day-by-day -day basis just because they are so extremely volatile. But either way, keep a close eye on them going forward. But Tom, we also had three very exciting earnings tonight as well. Uh, as we could tell by the earnings calendar, we have uh, quite the week ahead of us. And Amazon reported, or it was one of the stocks that reported in after hours today, and uh, it's looking pretty good so far. Yeah, it really is. They ended up beating on just about everything I saw here. The EPS was beat, the revenue beat, uh, the web services, the advertising revenue beat. I even saw some good numbers with AWS where they accelerated 17% in the first quarter, beating forecasts of 12%. Operating income soared more than 2 hundred percent in the period aws accounted for 62 percent of total operating profit so man mike i mean looks it's looking pretty good here for amazon right now let's go look at the ticker and the stock on the chart the thing i would say is like it's not really like wowing investors i guess right like like they beat but then again it's like the stock's not really moving too much i will say this though on such a red day for them to start to pop up a little bit, that's definitely a good sign. But you know what I mean? It's not like they're up 10%, uh, 20% 20 or anything like that right now. Yeah, they're not seeing that uh, Google-type price action like we saw last <laughs> week. That thing rocketed. But yeah, Amazon's holding up for now. But one stock that isn't holding up is AMD. They also reported earnings, but uh, it's looking pretty rough. It really is, Mike. This is a pretty bad move with AMD all the way down to 149, breaking under 150 at one point in after hours. That's going to be a big support to continue to watch for tomorrow. But man, it's not good. The gaming revenue fell 48% year over year. And again, these earnings weren't terrible. Like when I read through, uh, they beat a little bit on revenue, 5.47 billion versus 5.46 billion expected. The EPS beat by one cent. So again, it's just not wowing enough, right? Especially whenever these stocks are as high as a lot of them are, they need to kind of have earnings that wow, like we saw with Google last week. Like that was a wowing earnings report. Whereas so far tonight, Amazon and AMD have not had that wow factor mixed in. It seems like every single earnings season, we have a stock or a couple stocks that report good earnings in fall and some stocks that report bad earnings and in rise. Uh, this does confuse investors sometimes, but what it goes to show is that in the short term, uh, fundamentals do not dictate stock price. There's a lot more involved, like the company's guidance, its valuation, and just uh, short-term sentiment as well. So this is one of the many reasons why it's just not worth trading earnings in the short term. But while we're on the topic of AMD, let's jump over to SMCI really quickly. They reported earnings after the bell as well, and they are in the semiconductor industry. And again, it's uh, looking pretty rough. So when we look at the uh, semiconductor stocks tomorrow like AMD, SMCI, NVDA, and others be a little bit skeptical because uh, they are uh, pretty weak in after hours right now. Oh no, NVIDIA is actually down around big support too, breaking under it, sitting right around it around like that 848 to 850 area. So that's definitely going to be on watch for tomorrow. And with how red the market was today, uh, it's not looking good in after hours, Mike. We're going to be opening up red tomorrow if this uh, if this keeps up into open. But, you know, this is why it's important to be adaptable, guys. We are in earnings season. There's going to be a lot of 
crazy swings out there. And Mike, uh, you know, we're in earnings season and we have Jerome Powell coming up too, of all things, right? So now we have to worry about earnings and we have to worry about the man, the myth, the legend tomorrow around 2 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to get that interest rate decision and then he will be speaking at 2.30 p.m. Eastern time. I will have both of these events live on the Stocked Up Live YouTube channel. So check that out, guys. If you guys are not subscribed yet, please go check it out. But yeah, we'll have that live, Mike. And we all know Powell's going to add a lot of volatility and everybody out there is watching like are they going to have rate cuts this year are they not hopefully he gives us some indication the time has come Tom there's around a 96% chance that interest rates are going to stay exactly the same tomorrow and uh, you know obviously that's a very high probability but what's more important than you know whether or not interest rates are increased or decreased or just kept the same is what Powell says as we all know Jerome Powell is uh, one of the most uh, influential people when it comes to the stock market so not only what he says but how he says you know his speech does have a very big impact on investor sentiment and just outlooks going forward. So 2.30 p.m. Eastern time is the time to tune in tomorrow. That is when he'll be speaking. And then 30 minutes before that at 2 p.m. is when the uh, big decision comes out. So be ready. Events like these ones always bring in a lot of extra volatility. And they're also very important just for the you know economy as a whole because interest rates have a giant ripple effect onto like almost every part of the economy. Yeah, they do. There's going to be a lot of big watch out there on the bond yields, obviously. A lot of people are going to be watching the dollar, DXY, and even gold in the metals are probably going to end up moving quite a bit tomorrow. Talking about gold, Mike, it's actually starting to come down from highs quite a bit, kind of like we expected. You know, it got a little overextended there, but that will be something that comes into play because, you know, a lot of people are like, wow, well, Powell's going to make, you know, the spy move, the spy, right? Like, there's so many underlying factors as of why the spy is moving, right? Like the bond markets and everything like that that people sometimes forget about. So, uh, yeah, tomorrow around 2 p.m. Eastern time, be ready. There's going to be a lot of volatility. And, Mike, hopefully heading into 2 p.m., we have some fun trades with these MJ stocks because, uh, you know, with these earnings tomorrow morning, it's probably going to be pretty crazy for tech. Let's get it. All right, and let's also jump right into some specific setups and predictions for tomorrow. A stock I'm watching pretty closely right now is SMH, and it is to the downside. So this is basically a bunch of uh, semiconductor or chip-related stocks all under one ticker symbol. As we talked about with AMD and SMCI today, this industry is especially weak right now, and it has been rallying like none other over like the past year. And it's just like in like a pullback phase right now, which is normal, healthy, and expected. But at the same time, it is pulling back. So I'm definitely going to continue to watch this one in a bearish way. Um, the earnings from today don't help this uh, ETF, and it has been uh, relatively weak week over like the past month or so. So SMH is on the uh, downside radar for me tomorrow. Yeah, I actually really like these resistances on SMH around 220. And, you know, it's been coming back off that big dip it had a couple weeks ago. And I'm kind of glad that it came back a little bit. It's providing a pretty good opportunity back down here in the short term. So I'll definitely watch it down, Mike. One stock I am watching up tomorrow is PayPal. They reported earnings today. They did close up green. So I'm going to keep watching them if they could start to break back above like $69 tomorrow. I will look at calls. This is an earnings continuation play to the upside. I do want to throw in, though, of course, I'm watching the MJ stocks, too, right? Like, I think we're all watching those for tomorrow. No doubt. All right, another stock I'm watching pretty closely is Netflix. And again, it is to the downside. Uh, this one fell pretty bad on earnings the other week. And it has just been uh, consolidating right around this like $555 area now for a couple days. And uh, today it had an especially weak day. So it is uh, close on my, uh, again, downside radar for tomorrow. It does have some pretty strong support right around like 542 or so. So be be aware of that level, but if we see a clean break below that, it can definitely uh, get pretty nasty. Yeah, that support's looking pretty good in the short term. If we do see that break, I'll definitely look at it down, and with all the tech stocks down tonight, 
I would not be surprised if it ends up down tomorrow. And I'm actually looking at a big tech stock down tomorrow as well. And that is with Microsoft. They're down in the after hours quite a bit here, down under 394, all the way down to 3. 90 now. I mean, this is a pretty bad move. If they break under 388, I'm going to be eyeing up puts. And we have a big level on the book map at 388 as well. 390 was pretty big, but that's broken already. So I'm going to really watch 388. If we could get a solid drop under there tomorrow, I will continue to look at puts. Uh, it's it's a setup very similar to Netflix, Mike. Like it's been falling down quite a bit recently and starting to break big support at 400. So uh, we're seeing some good downside moves out of tech lately. And it's it's definitely one of those areas of the market where you can take some pretty good short-term advantage as these supports start to give. Yeah, Microsoft has been uh, getting pretty interesting. Uh, it is the heaviest weighted stock in the entire S&P 500. So when you have it falling the way it is, it has a pretty strong influence on the market as well. And, you know, it topped out right around like that $430 level back towards like the end of March or so. And ever since that point, it has just been uh, selling off pretty hard. So, yeah, I'll definitely keep a close uh, eye on that one as well. But let's jump right Right into today's momentum plays and with the first one we have gld to the upside yeah gld here if it goes ahead and breaks back above 212 30 then i up some calls all right with the next one we have meta to the downside meta yeah another tech stock here back down if they break under 428 then i up puts and with the last one, we have TLT for both directions. And for those of you who don't know, TLT follows like longer term treasury rates. And uh, given that we have a giant interest rate decision tomorrow, that can definitely bring in some extra volatility to this one. Yeah, I bet this one will be pretty crazy. If it breaks under 88.10, then go ahead and look at puts to the downside. If it ends up ripping above 88.50, then look at calls. All right, so we have the upside level for calls. We have the downside level for puts. That's for TLT. Don't forget about the downside level with Meta and then the upside level with GLD. Either way, these three stocks are on watch for potential day trades if and only if they break through the levels Tom listed and continue in those directions. The more, I guess I guess you could say strength and consistency each stock has, the better it becomes. You want to see strong, consistent price action, especially for a short-term day trade. So keep these three stocks on watch and let's jump right into today's 1.36 million dollar big money trade of the day and we are looking at ticker symbol ashr so we have not looked at this one in quite a while basically it is another etf that holds uh chinese related stocks and we have seen so many um I guess you could say bullish big money plays with the Chinese stocks lately. Um, ASHR is just another one, and they put uh, a little bit under $1.4 million into the 25 strike calls that expire on October 18th of 2024. Uh, these call options are pretty close to the money. There's a good amount of time to them. Chinese stocks have been rallying in the short term, which is always good to see. And um, my stance remains the same with uh, Chinese-related stocks right now. There is potential with them. Of course, they are risky than most stocks, given the geopolitical risks with China and Taiwan and everything else that goes along with that. But as long as uh, someone is willing to give them the time Time that they need. Um, I think there's a pretty good risk reward here. But again, um, you know, a trade like this one is not meant for tomorrow. It's more so for the next couple weeks and months. Yeah, really make sure that you give it the time that it needs. In the short term here, a lot of these China stocks have done really good, like BABA. Like it had one, two, three, four, five, like six really good days in a row. And then now it's starting just to taper over a little bit. But this might be a good dip buying opportunity as it starts to maybe turn over a little bit here. Because I feel like it'll eventually start to break this really big channel. We'll start to see some... Uh, better moves once those clear breaks do happen. So I don't think it's necessarily over. And I think that this dip will start to provide a good opportunity, but I'll keep my eyes on ASHR, Mike. There's been a lot of big money plays on the China stocks. And I wouldn't be surprised if in the short term they start popping off and who knows, I'm sure that the elections this year will play a big role on the China companies too. 
No doubt about that. But before we move on, I want to give a giant shout out to today's Discord member of the day, uh, Isidro, who uh, just crushed it with this CGC move today. So as we can see by this screenshot, it was uh, quite the day for him. So keep up the great work and uh, keep on rolling. It's awesome to see screenshots like this one. But Tom, do you have any final thoughts Heading into the market tomorrow, we're coming off of some pretty crazy earnings, a super crazy move with these uh, marijuana stocks, and we have the big man, Jerome Powell, coming back. Yeah, I think Jerome Powell is going to be the big event for tomorrow. Definitely be ready. Uh, check out the Stocked Up Live channel. Like I said earlier, I'll be going live around 2 p.m. Eastern time, so that'll be pretty big there. But JP, the man, the myth, the legend, he'll be the, uh, the big thing to watch tomorrow, Mike. Definitely be ready for that volatility. I think the marijuana stocks will be my main watcher tomorrow morning. I really have to uh, keep my eyes on these. If we do see more good volatility and volume come in tomorrow at open, we could see some great movement. So uh, hopefully we see nice continuations because whenever you go to the daily chart and you look at some of the previous runs out of CGC, Tilray and others, they can run for quite a while. So hopefully this is just the beginning here for these MJ stocks. We shall see. But last but not least, if you're new to the channel, consider demolishing that subscribe button to get our videos recommended to you more often. We post all the time, and in each video, we cover multi million dollar big money trades, the most important news you have to know about, uh, setups and predictions for tomorrow, and uh, other charts that you just wouldn't find anywhere else. So consider demolishing that subscribe button and joining the Stocked Up crew. But we have a very exciting day ahead of us. So let's make it a great one.